call David Clendon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora koutou. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to take just a short call on this bill in order to, um, to affirm the Green Party's support for this legislation. It is legislation that has been some time coming, and there are reasons for that, but it certainly does meet a need. Um, I'm grateful to the chair of the Select Committee, who has led us through the sometimes torturous path to get to this point, because she has a phrase that often comes, brings us back to saying, well, what is the mischief? What is it that we are actually trying to achieve here? And with these relatively complex bills that do engage and, um, and address a, a range of related complex issues, it's very useful just to be centred in that way, to think, what is the mischief? And we know there has been mischief, largely emanating, emerging from the radical and excessive deregulation of the finance sector over a number of years, over several decades. And the previous speaker, Mr Parker, very clearly outlined the danger of overregulation. It's absolutely true that restricting the availability of capital or finance is a, a serious problem for some of our most innovative, some of our most potentially productive industries. We have some very smart people in business in this country who are able to come up with ideas, processes which can, in time, return significant value in all sorts of ways. We do not want to overly regulate or restrict the availability of, of venture capital, of expansion money, in order to allow those, those small businesses to grow and to, be, to give a real positive contribution to all of us. Having said that, the, the need for more regulation is undeniable, and for that reason we do support this legislation. It has often been remarked in the course of the Select Committee process, people have questioned how is it that in the failures of the finance sector there was so much incompetence. And there was a degree of incompetence, undoubtedly. People simply got things wrong. And this legislation will serve to, in part, to shine a light on that level of incompetence and hopefully drive it out of the sector. But much more than that, I think, there's been a failure of integrity. And the deregulation combined with a prevailing attitude of if you can get away with it, you should, has, lent, has led us to a situation where large numbers of people actually lost money, where the, the sector did have very um, unfortunate consequences. And this, this legislation will enable a tighter rein, a closer eye to be kept on, on what is actually happening in the sector. It is, it is required. You cannot legislate um, ultimately against dishonesty or foolishness, and nor should we endeavour to. But what we can do is endeavour to ensure that people can have a reasonable expectation of integrity, of competence and adequate regulation, and that the dealings of finance companies, of the finance sector more generally, of um, of financial transactions will be openly and transparently and appropriately reported. And again, this, this legislation takes us some way down that path. I heard earlier a reference to financial literacy, and we know that New Zealanders, perhaps not uniquely, but certainly do not have a high level of financial literacy. And I suspect again that that is a, a hangover, perhaps, from an earlier time when there was a great deal more trust. People who found that they in possession of a lump of capital for whatever reason, could and would invest it with a trusted professional, with a reasonable expectation that their, um, their trust would be uh, rewarded and well founded. I think we've gone beyond that. I think we've entered a time where the integrity or where, not, where the industry did not in its entirety reflect the integrity. There was not a good grounds for trust within that. And we have, in that case, needed to return to a leg uh, regulatory response, a mechanism to ensure that there is more protection for, for investors and that people will have a much clearer view of what has been carried out, what has been done in their name. In terms of financial reporting, I've made the point before that we look forward to a time where not only the, the money flow through a business is reported on, when auditors go beyond simply reporting on financial transactions, but when auditors and financial reports generally also engage with and report on the broader effect of a business activities, um, the environmental effect, the social effect, the costs and benefits, not only economic, but also environmental and social costs and benefits. 
And this is not something we need to invent. It is becoming increasingly commonplace internationally. There are well established and well respected international bodies capable of modelling good reporting, which engages social and environmental cost and benefit as well as the economic, financial. And this is something which, again, in time we may see value in a, a light handed regulatory framework to require that. But I think more and more it will come from the business and finance sector itself as people require a, a better, a clearer and a more comprehensive picture of what has been done in their name with their money and what is the social and environmental impact of business and finance transactions generally. I think we have, to, to return just to the general theme of integrity, of um, trustworthiness of our professionals in whom we do um, we expect them to perform, perform on our behalf. I think there is perhaps returning or certainly an emerging sense in our education and training institutions that alongside competence we also need to teach ethical models and that we need to challenge young professionals in particular and indeed not so young professionals who are responsible for both managing and reporting on financial activity to challenge them to investigate their own value systems, their own belief systems, in order that they will behave in ways which people can reasonably expect that um, will return honest and open transparency into the sector. So in summary, Mr Speaker, as I say, we are pleased that this, um, in some ways we regret the need for this regulation, but that need is undeniable. We do need to put more reins and to to demand greater transparency and some more authority within the sector. We are very happy to support that and will continue to do so. Kia ora. Call Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker.